This video is part of the e-learning series Expansion of Mesenchymal Stem Cells in Stirred Single-Use Bioreactors, specifically cells derived from human adipose tissue and generally referred to as MSCs. In this section we focus on bioengineering characterization of bioreactor systems. As an example, the principles of bioengineering characterization are presented for the universal SU2 liter system. In order to define suitable process parameters, an accurate characterization of a cultivation system is required. This also allows for the comparison of different bioreactor types and for rapid scale up. Bioengineering characterization can be performed by using parametrical or experimental methods to determine conventional parameters such as flow regime, mixing times and oxygen transfer. Nowadays, modern computer assisted technologies such as computational fluid dynamics or CFD can also be used. In CFD simulation, the first step is to prepare a CAD drawing of the bioreactor. Next, mesh generation is performed to discretize the fluid volume into small volume elements. Finally, a finite volume solver is used to calculate fluid flow patterns, fluid velocities and other main bioengineering parameters. Single phase models are used to begin with. We can also obtain information about local shear stress distributions, turbulence dissipation rates and Kolmogorov eddy sizes. These computer simulated data are experimentally verified by particle image velocimetry. Particle image velocimetry, or PIV, is a laser-assisted method which enables contactless measurement of fluid velocities in an optically accessible system. But let's start with a short overview of the theoretical principles of PIV measurement. For this, it is essential that the bioreactor system is transparent and optically accessible. First of all, in order to reduce light scattering and light reflection, the universal SU2L system is placed in a cube-shaped vessel filled with water. Rhodamine-coated fluorescent particles are then added to the universal. The particles follow the fluid flow mostly slip-free, absorbing the green laser light and emitting fluorescent light, which is simultaneously recorded. After putting the bioreactor in position, a reflection marker is placed on the bioreactor shaft. In combination with the trigger laser, the reflection marker allows phase-locked measurements to be made. The laser and the camera are positioned at right angles to each other. In order to scan the whole reactor plane, they can be moved vertically using a traverse system. The univessel is illuminated by a 1mm wide double pulsed laser field, which is vertically aligned to the impeller shaft. The camera takes photographs in four different positions along the shaft. In order to obtain statistically validated data, 1,000 double pictures are taken in each position. After collecting the data, the coordinates of each measurement position are combined and the fluid flow pattern is calculated. This is based on an interrogation window of 32 by 32 pixels and cross-correlation of the double frame images. The results of the PIV measurements are qualitatively and quantitatively compared with the CFD predicted fluid velocities. If experimental data are in good agreement with the CFD simulations, in other words, deviations are below 10%, the CFD model can be extended by considering the microcarriers as solid phase. Microcarrier distribution is calculated using multi-phase Euler-Euler-Rands simulations. Finally, the sedimentation conditions of the microcarriers are determined experimentally. They are then used to specify optimum impeller speeds in order to avoid mass transfer limitations and gradient formation while keeping shear stress as low as possible. Two suspension criteria were found to be especially important when successfully expanding HMSCs in stirred bioreactors operating with microcarriers, the NS1 and the NS1U criteria. NS1 represents the impeller speed at which no particle stays at the bottom of a bioreactor for longer than one second. NS1U is the lower limit of NS1 and occurs when particles are located at the bottom of the vessel with none of them at rest. Firstly, the microcarriers are prepared and equilibrated according to the manufacturer's instructions. For all the suspension studies, it is important to have optical accessibility to the bottom of the bioreactor. This allows the suspension characteristics of the microcarriers to be assessed. For this purpose, the universal SU2L is fitted with a mirror which guarantees a clear view of the bioreactor bottom. After the bioreactor has been installed, the first concentration of microcarriers is added to the medium. A camera is used for documentation purposes. It also enables suspension characteristics at different microcarrier concentrations to be compared. The impeller speed of the reactor is regulated with a control unit, Biostat B+. The impeller speed is increased incrementally. After each increase, the microcarry movement is observed and the impeller speeds for the NS1U and the NS1 criteria are determined. The results of the suspension studies are combined with those from the CFD simulations. The optimal conditions for the expansion of the human adipose tissue-derived stem cells can now be determined.
For the cultivation of human adipose tissue-derived mesenchymal stem cells on microcarriers, the NS1U criterion has been found to be the most appropriate. The suspension criteria must be determined for every bioreactor microcarrier combination and can be applied as a scale-up criteria for process transfer from milliliter to benchtop and to pilot scale. In summary, it should again be emphasized that bioengineering characterization of bioreactors is essential for the definition of cultivation parameters and for rapid scale-up. Today, CFD plays an important role in the simulation of fluid flow. Nevertheless, the numerically calculated results need to be verified experimentally by using, for example, particle image velocimetry. Finally, when working with mesenchymal stem cells on microcarriers, special attention needs to be paid to microcarrier distribution. Suspension criteria, especially the NS1U criterion, have been shown to be suitable for determining the impeller speed required, as well as for scale-up. Click replay to watch this video again or follow the links to the other videos.